Hey, what's up, guys? So we're going to talk about a principle of, called TIVA, so total IV anesthesia. Let's say you got a patient, you want to sedate him, you know you got to give him a bunch of medications, so what's to prevent you from mixing those medications and using the least amount of resources to deliver that medication? So we're going to talk about a principle called the pocket rocket or pain stick. Basically, I'll pull up three cc's of ketamine, one cc of fentanyl, and one cc of Verset. What that gives me is 150 milligrams, 50 micrograms, and five milligrams in a five cc syringe. Now, if we follow that same principle, let's figure out you know, what my concentration per cc is. Well, we'll just divide this by five. So it gives us 30 milligrams, gives us 10 micrograms, and gives us one milligram per cc. Now, with this little pocket rocket, let's say I got a patient and I need to dose him over a long period of time. Well, I can either tape that to my patient, you know, kind of dummy cord it to him. I could have a, a bigger CC, like a 10 CC, and then it keeps in my pocket if I have multiple patients. And I can give every single person a one CC bump, you know, every 10 minutes. Let's say I'm going around, I have a CCP, I've got, you know, five patients, and I've just got a generalized pain stick ready, so I'm not going drawing up a bunch of drugs each time somebody needs a medication. It's already ready for me, and I'm the most senior practitioner there. I have like CLS or EMTBs with me, and I can just go up every 10 to 15 minutes, give them a bump, check for nystagmus, get another blood pressure, and kind of roll off from there. And from this, let's talk about resource dependence. Well, I have one syringe, I can get it done with one needle set, and then I have these three medications that I have to carry. But after that, like, I'm not burning through a bunch of syringes, I'm not burning through a bunch of needles. I mean, as long as I have louver locks, I'm good to go for that, or at least, you know, the louver lock saving flush. And I can just keep pushing these medications and I'm not burning through a bunch of supplies. I like this for prolonged field care. Also, it potentiates its effect, it kind of stacks on. So once again, ketamine's are dissociative, fentanyl's working on your mu receptors, Percent's working on your GABA ganglion, and it's just synergistically affecting all those different receptor points. So you can do a lower dose. I mean, if you got a smaller male patient or a smaller female patient, you could probably give them a 0.5 cc and get 15 milligrams, you know, five micrograms and 0.5 milligrams. Like the, the fentanyl here is really not doing much but taking the edge off. The ketamine's the main driving force behind this cocktail. The fentanyl's gonna potentiate the ketamine, and the reset is gonna do a nice amnesic effect of I'm pulling about 24 hours prior and about 40 hours, 48 hours post. So this guy will also get him in a nice saucy plane so I can hook up my, my IV anesthesia for my clock method, which we're gonna go after right after this. But definitely check out the pain stick. Uh, like I said, prolongedfieldcare.org has some good articles on it. If you guys have any questions on this, shoot me an email, uh, message me, and we can get you guys rolling on this. In an environment where we have to keep a patient consciously sedated or we have the least amount of resources or we have a long transport time, five hours or so, and I need to keep a patient down because he's you know, got messed up in combat or whatnot, and I want to use the least amount of resources possible. Now, in a perfect world, each one of these have their own bag, but that is a lot of solution. That's a lot of IV line. That's a lot of weight. So what we're going to talk about is putting three different medications into an IV bag. So similar to what we talked about a couple weeks ago with uh, the clock method, it's the same principle. So the drugs I have and the volume I have. So we're going to put 750 milligrams of ketamine, 250 micrograms of fentanyl, and 25 milligrams of Versed into the 250 cc bag. So our factor is four. We're going to figure out our concentrations. So this would be 3,000 micrograms. This would be one microgram. And this would be 100, 100 micrograms per cc. So this is the dose that we have per cc. So what is our desired dose? Well, there's a couple different ways to figure this out. What I like to do is dose off the ketamine. The ketamine is usually anywhere between 17 and 60 micrograms per kilogram per minute, or most people say 0.5 to 3 milligrams per kilogram per hour. So since I'm potentiating the effects with fentanyl and Merced, I'll kind of half it. And if we half that dose, we get somewhere around 8 to 30 micrograms per kilogram per minute. I do the doses per minute because it's easier to figure out this way. If you're using a drip calculator, you can use kilograms per hour or whatnot. So let's say our desired dose is eight micrograms to 30 micrograms per kilogram per minute. I'll we'll start at eight. So eight micrograms times 100 kilograms per minute equals 800 micrograms per minute. And now we'll draw our clock out. So we got our 60 drop set. It's equal to 3,000. Which is equal to 1 microgram. 
100 micrograms. And this is how much per cc of medication they're getting. So once again, we have ketamine, we have fentanyl and Brissette. And now we start at eight, we're gonna be somewhere around 16 drops a second. On 60 drop set, so 16 milliliters per hour. Now if we go all the way to 30, we're gonna get 3,000, so we're gonna be about 60. So we get about a cc a minute. So it's gonna be anywhere from 16 to 60 drops a minute, which equates to 16 60 milliliters per hour. Now the reason I say half the ketamine dose is we're potentiating these effects, right? So we're just trying to get to nystagmus. So if I start at 16, I increase them all the way up, let's say I get to 25 drops a minute. So 25 will put me somewhere this range here. Let's say we're at 1200 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Now I'm gonna check his blood pressure. I'm gonna check his, his map to make sure everything's perfusing properly. So we don't wanna overdose this dude, because think about it, this guy just got injured in combat. Ketamine has a, well, I mean, people use ketamine to get high, right? So it has a disassociative property. So imagine if you just dropped a bunch of LSD or whatnot, and you just got like your arm cut off. You're not having a great trip. So with that disassociative property, we're gonna relieve a little bit of that pain, and with the Brissette, we're gonna affect that, you know, transient amnesia pathway that the GABA ganglia are. So I'm worried about a little bit of pre-event, a little bit of post-event amnesia, but I'm not giving such high doses that I'm worried about that transient hypotension effect. But I'm synergistically mixing these drugs together to make sure I'm getting the therapeutic effect I want. Theoretically on these guys, they can still follow simple commands. So if you're like, hey buddy, come here and move to me. Obviously if he's, you know, has both his legs, he's not severely messed up. But somebody who's, you know, still able to ambulate on their own, but pretty messed up, or somebody that you need to keep in a nice level plane so they're not moving around a lot, this is a good dosing chart for it. Now, if you guys have any questions on Tiva, uh, Prolong Field Care has a great article. There's also a couple other kind of articles you can reach out to. Now, this is something a lot of units have been using for a while, but I mean, the math on it's tricky. Like, if you don't have a good foundation of the clock method and how to like, dose these medications, you're gonna run into some problems. So, I mean, just look at all the numbers on here. Like, if you had to change the dosage on this, or say you had a different drip chart, like, would you be able to do it? Let's find out. Let's say we had a, a 10 drop set. So this is why I teach a clock method, because this is a lot of dimensional analysis. Now if I have a 10 drop set, we're just looking at the clock, so I'm here and here, well, I'd give anywhere between 2.5 and five drops to get them in this therapeutic range that I was aiming at. And that's kind of the principle here, is I can use basically this chart and, and figure out like, hey, how many drops am I supposed to give this guy? On a quick method, I'm titrating to effect, I'm making sure he's, he's perfusing properly, making sure he has the right blood pressures. At the end of the day, like you can have the perfect, you know, pharmacology calculation, all your math works out, but if it doesn't work for your patient, it doesn't really matter. Let's say this dude has a stupid high tolerance to ketamine, and I'm dosing him at the proper dose of, you know, 16 drops a minute, but you know, he's still writhing in pain. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bump up. You should always check the clinical presentation of your patient. But if you guys like this kind of stuff and you want to see more of it, feel free to shoot me a message. Like, this is what I love to teach and kind of things like that. So, like I said, this is Tiva. If you guys have any questions, shoot me a message or maybe we can do some training together. Just let me know. Appreciate you.